A lot of people come to me because I've considered myself to be the self-proclaimed Rust server doctor. But I don't pretend like I'm the only one that knows anything about Rust servers. So when someone from my community reaches out to me and says, Hey, can you do an update on a video because this one that you've got here is already outdated? At first I thought to myself, did I really miss that? Did I really miss the detail that they completely revamped the plugin and I completely missed it? About a week ago, Chris Dean reached out to me and said, Can you do a new remover tool video? And I actually sat on that for a couple minutes because I, I couldn't figure out why he was asking me to do a new one. And then I went and looked at the actual plugin page for remover tool and I found out why. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what I found when I got there. Before we jump into the video though, let me know what you guys think about this background. If it's too much, be honest with me and tell me that it's too much. It feels like it's too much to me. So if I feel that way, you probably do too. And I'll get rid of it in future videos. I just wanted to try it out and see how it went. Hey guys, welcome to Rust Admin Academy, where I do my very best to teach you guys the tips and tricks to owning and operating a successful Rust server. If you're brand new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notification bells so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. If you take any value out of this video at all, make sure you do me a favor, smash that thumbs up for me. So I've been low key thinking that I should be called the Rust Admin Doctor. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below because if you take the initials of Rust Admin Doctor, what do you get? When I went to the UMod webpage for Remover Tool, this is what I found. And there's a link in the description. When you click on updates, you'll see that the developer has actually been working on this plugin over the last couple of weeks. So four days ago, 18 days ago, but 19 days ago, you'll see he posted this update that says, please delete all of the plugin files. And this is an important step. What this is indicating is that this developer has actually rewritten the plugin completely from the ground up, which means none of the previous files are actually going to work anymore. So when this happens, and we do appreciate it when the developers are working on the plugins to the point where they have to start from scratch and rebuild from the ground up, because it means that they're making the plugin more efficient and more effective on your server. And this one in particular, before the revamp was quite resource heavy. So you'd notice if you were removing a large base or something like that, it would actually stall out your server. And what I'm excited to see is if this new version of it isn't so resource heavy. So what I'm going to do with you today is show you the exact steps that you need to take on your server if you have a previous version of the remover tool to make sure that you get rid of all of the files and then we're going to start from scratch again. So there's obviously there's going to be config files that we need to get rid of. There might be language files that we need to get rid of. And then of course there's the plugin itself that we need to get rid of. And I don't recall off the top of my head, but there might even be a data file that we need to get rid of. In the process of all of this, we also have to remember that there's going to be permissions that are required to use this plugin. So it's important to make note if there were any changes to the permission names. So if we jump down to the permissions section, I can already tell that there have been some changes to the permissions. So we have to be cognizant of that as we're reinstalling this plugin and testing it out on our server. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually remove the plugin itself. And we can do that simply by deleting it out of our plugins folder. All right, so now we need to go through and find anything that is related to remover tool. So we're going to start with the config folder. And of course, we have a remover tool config file. We're going to get rid of that. Simply delete it. Let's check the data file. I don't, I'm not sure that there's going to be anything in here. I don't think so. No. And then the next is the language folder. And there is a remover tool file in the language folder. I'm assuming that this probably isn't an important file to get rid of, but hey, we're here. Why not? And there isn't going to be anything in the logs file. So I'm going to go ahead and download and install the new version of remover tool into our test server. And then we'll go over anything that might have changed on this newer version. If you've never seen how to install a UMod plugin, make sure you click on the card in the top right hand corner right now. It'll take you to a video that shows you how to install a plugin and what to expect while you're doing so. But make sure you come back to this video and finish watching how to configure remover tool. The previous version that I pulled out of the test server was 4.2.10. The new version is 4.3.2. So quite a few changes from the last version that we were using. And as you can see there in our config file, we can see that it has generated a new config file. Let's pop that open and see what that looks like. Okay, there have been some serious changes on this plugin. So there is an astronomical number of factors that we can configure in this plugin. I'm not gonna go through each and every one of them. They're all fairly self-explanatory. Do you wanna use clans? Do you wanna use friends? So like stuff like that is gonna be fairly similar to what it was before, but it is important that you go through and actually configure this to what's gonna work on your server. What you don't want to have happen for people that shouldn't be able to remove a base be allowed to. So make sure you do your permissions correctly. Make sure you set up your configuration correctly because it's very, very important. 
one of the problems that we ran into with the previous version of this was if somebody were to join a clan and then for whatever reason be kicked out of that clan, they were still able to remove the base of their clan even though they weren't actually a member of that clan. So you get some dissension in the ranks or whatever, you end up kicking out a, a member of your clan and then all of a sudden you come back on the next day and your entire base is gone because that clan member was able to come back mad at you and remove your entire base. You don't want that. I'm hoping that that was a glitch somewhere in the coding somewhere and it's actually been fixed on this version. So it is something that I'm going to test extensively to make sure that this is working properly before I actually implement it back into my regular servers. Anyways, let's hop in game and see what things are doing in game. So I just did a real quick pasta of a base that I have on file. Uh, so I have no access to this base. I can't get in. Um, I don't have build priv, nothing like that. So let's see what happens when I do slash remove. Okay, so right off the bat, I don't have the permission required to use this plugin. So let's open up our permissions menu and have a look at that. So this is permissions menu. This is the, the permissions controller that I use most often. This is a free version. If you wanna see how to get this plugin for yourself, make sure you click on the card in the top right hand corner right now. I'll also put a link to it in the video description down below. It's an incredibly powerful tool. It'll make your life so much easier when you're dealing with permissions. Okay, so let's go into the remover tool permissions. And I assume for the group default, we just wanna have normal. So let's just grant normal for now. Oh, there's even a VIP section for remover tool. That's actually kind of cool. So now if I do slash remove, now I have time to use it. Let's see if I can use it on this base. And I can't. Oh, wow. Did he ever change it up? Look at the graphics that show up. This is glorious. So it says I can't remove this base. So let's get some resources and see if that changes anything. Okay, so now I have resources and I can remove this. So that's a little bit surprising that I'm able to remove this when I don't have build priv. Okay, so it was at this point where I decided that it had to have been because I was logged in as auth level two. So I'm actually gonna switch accounts right now to one of my alt accounts that doesn't have auth level two on this server. And I wanna see if that makes a difference. I'm wondering if there are some default permissions that you get just simply because you are the owner of the server. So we're gonna find that out here in a second. Okay, so after having switched accounts, now I have materials on hand. Let's see what happens when we do slash remove now. Okay, perfect. So it says cannot remove, you don't have any rights to remove this. I think what was happening before was because it was my other character that actually pasted the base into place. So it technically gave me ownership even though I didn't want it to. And I did go through and authorize on the TC and then deauthorize on the TC and I thought that would have done it. However, it didn't. So this is actually a really good thing. It means that that protection is in place so that somebody can't come along and remove your base when they didn't build it in the first place. So that's all very good. I'm actually quite glad that that wasn't like a glitch in the matrix or something like that that was making it so that I was able to remove panels even though I didn't have building permission. So I'm gonna to switch to my other account now. For you guys, it'll just take a second so that we can finish up with remover tool. Now that I'm back onto my other account, we can go through and finish up with these permissions. So this time around, I've done slash perms group admin so that we can go in and see what we can add for just the admin group. Because we granted the permission normal to the group called default, we don't have to re-grant it here. We, we could if we wanted to, but you don't necessarily have to. We're gonna do admin, we're gonna do target, we're gonna do all structure uh, will override and we don't necessarily need we're going to get into what the vip abilities are i think i have a pretty good idea of what that is but we're going to get into that as soon as i'm done this so now i've done remove structure and it gives us five minutes to to do that let's just uh let's just click right here so obviously that removes the entire structure does it leave any bags on the ground no it doesn't so this doesn't actually it even tells you how many entities it removed which is kind of cool. And another very powerful tool for admins to have is remove all. Which would appear to do the exact same thing. However, the difference is, is if there was, let's say there was other structures around here and other, let's say, and like high external stone walls and stuff like that. If we did just slash remove structure, it would just remove the building that we were looking at. Whereas slash remove all will remove everything that is attached to the area. So that, that could include obviously high external walls, any outbuildings that they might have, anything any furnaces, whatever might be attached to the area, it's gonna remove all of that. 
So now that we've got some furnaces and some refineries outside, I'll show you what I mean by that. So we just do slash remove structure and just tap on the structure. It leaves all of those other materials here. So what is not part of the building will still remain. Whereas if we do slash remove all and just touch the building, it removes everything. It didn't get this furnace, but it did get all of the refineries that we just had, plus the other two furnaces. So as an admin, let's say you had to get rid of a base. Maybe you found a cheater, a hacker, something, and you just wanted to completely delete their base. You could either do slash remove all, which would get rid of everything, including any walls or outbuildings that they might have had, or you can just do slash remove structure, and it'll just get rid of the building that you're looking at. What I find most helpful about this plugin itself is you still have the ability to just use slash remove. I'm talking as an admin now. Let's say somebody got griefed and you don't allow griefing on your server. Then of course you're able to go in and remove whatever items you want to remove. That's if you have this admin permission granted. Basically what that does is it allows you to remove panels whether you have TC access or not. Panels, doors, boxes, whatever might have been used to grief the base. Now that we have a fairly decent playlist of the various different plugins that I've done tutorials on, what's your favorite one? I want to hear from you guys. What was the most helpful tutorial that I've put out for you guys? And what would you guys like to see in the future? Make sure you guys leave some notes down in the comment section down below so that I can get you guys exactly what you're looking for. And I just want to know which one was most helpful for you. Okay, so that's it for the new remover tool plugin. If you guys found this video helpful in the slightest bit, make sure you do me a favor, smash that thumbs up for me. It helps me out so much, you can't even imagine. And if you wanna see more content just like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notification bells. And of course, speaking of the playlist, make sure you check out the videos on the right-hand side of your screen right now if you wanna see more great Rust tutorials. All right, that's it for me. I'll see you guys next Friday.